Hi everyone, Angela here. I have a new pattern called the Hannah pouch. This handy line pouch has no zipper tabs and a convenient open wide fold over top allowing for easy access. The pattern is for a small and medium size and the smaller one can nest inside for easy storage and gift giving. The link to purchase this pattern is down in the description below. Make sure you watch right to the end. I'll show you a few different methods I use for finishing the binding. Print the pattern at 100% letter size and check the 1 inch square on each page. Carefully cut out all the pattern pieces for the size you'd like to make and the small notches on each side. Join the main pieces together at the center and then cut out the two binding pieces. For the outer layer, I'm cutting two pieces of lightweight cotton. For the lining, I'm using quilting cotton. Don't use any of the selvage. I'm also going to cut out the binding strips with this fabric along the lengthwise grain. To give the pouch some structure, I'm using fusible fleece with the glue dots on one side. This is the medium weight Velizaline H640. Cut two for the outer layer. This is optional for the lining. Cut two pieces of medium weight non-woven fusible interfacing. This will give the pouch a bit more structure. Place the fusible fleece with the glue side up and give it a light spray with water. Place the wrong side of the outer fabric on top matching all the edges and cover it with a non-stick pressing cloth. You can also just use a damp pressing cloth. Press by holding your iron down for about 10 to 15 seconds on each section. Don't slide your iron around, you want the heat to activate the glue. Trim away any excess fleece and then repeat with the other side. Line up both pieces together, place the pattern on top and then cut the small notches on both sides through all the layers. For the linings and interfacing, just use the same method without the water to press together. To prepare all the bindings, fold in half with wrong sides together and press. Open up, fold the outer edges to the center, leaving a very small gap in the middle and press. Carefully fold in half again and press. For both the outer and lining pieces, match the shorter bottom edges with right sides together and clip if you need to. I'm using the Juki TL2010Q sewing machine. The link for this and the tools I use are down in the description below. If you're in Australia or New Zealand, click the link for Echidna Sewing and Juki Junkies for North America. Increase the stitch length to number 3. For the outer layers, stitch together using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, back tacking at the start and finish. Open up and then just finger press open the seam allowance on the back. With the seam open, have the right side of the foot run along the seam and top stitch on either side. There's no need to back tack. This top stitching will keep this bulky seam nice and flat. For the lining, stitch together with a slightly bigger half inch seam allowance, back tacking at the start and finish. You can top stitch this seam as well, but I prefer to just press it open. This number three zipper tape and its matching zipper pull are both from Sweet Pea Embroidery. Cut the zipper tape the same length as the top of the pouch and then separate. With teeth side down, match the edge of the tape with the edge of the pouch. With right sides together, place the lining on top. Carefully line up all three edges, clip together and then repeat on the other side. To attach the zipper tape, I'm using this narrow zipper foot P363. Have the side of the zipper foot pushed right against the zipper teeth. Stitch both sides, back tacking at the start and finish. 
If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to like, share, subscribe, turn on all notifications, and leave a comment below. Turn the pouch right side out and then pull on both sides to fully expose the zipper tape. Fold the fabric and lining so that it's away from the zipper tape. Edge stitch both sides with the side of the foot running along the edge of the fabric. There's no need to back tack. On each side, match the edges of both layers and the bottom seams, then clip together. Switch back to the standard presser foot. Sew the layers together close to the edges on both sides without sewing on the zipper tape. If you need to, trim away any zipper tape so that it's even with the sides. Fold the sides over so that the zipper is in the center. Place the ends of the zipper tape evenly into the shoulder of the zipper slider about halfway in. Move the slider pull up, hold down the edges of the pouch close to the slider, and then wiggle the pull up the teeth. Make sure the ends of the zipper tape are even with the pouch. Pull the slider almost to the other end, check if it's even, and then trim if you need to. Open about halfway, then fold matching the zipper teeth at the top. Find the notches on the side. I'm just going to mark it so that you can see. Clip the sides together just below it. On the other side, fold the zipper tape so the teeth are right in the center. Find the notches and again clip below it. For both sides, stitch close to the edges, just to the notch and back tack. You can skip this step if you like, but I find it really helps with the folding. Remove the clips and turn inside out. Push the top down so that it's folded at the notches, match the side edges and clip in place. Make sure the folds at the top are perfectly even. Using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, sew all the layers together on both sides. No need to back tack. At the top, if there's a bit of fabric sticking out, trim it down so that the sides are nice and straight. Take one of the longer pieces of binding and open up one edge. Starting from the bottom, match the side edges. The binding will be a bit longer at the top. When sewing the binding, don't stitch in the crease, but just to the right of it. Keep the edges even and there's no need to back tack. Just stitch past the top edge. Flip over to the other side. Fold down the top of the binding. Instead of having this edge straight, pull tightly on the corner until it's about quarter of an inch from the edge. Then stitch on top of the original stitch line. Back tack at the top and just stitch past the end. Flip over the top and you'll notice that the fold now angles down just a little bit. Pinch in the center and you'll notice that the corner doesn't poke out on the side. Fold over the binding so that the folded edge just covers the stitching. The top of the binding should also be nice and straight. Clip the binding in place, making sure it covers the stitching. Double check that inner corner isn't poking out. Stitch about a sixteenth of an inch from the fold, back tacking at the start and finish. Open up the bottom corner and match the seams in the center. Have the seam with the binding folded down towards you. Push the fabric flat inside so that you don't get any pleating. Stitch all together close to the edge, then repeat on the other side. Method 1 for the bottom corners. Take one of the shorter binding strips and open up one side. Fold in half and pinch to mark the center. Place the binding on the bottom edge of the pouch matching the centers and the edges and clip if you need to. 
starting at the edge of the pouch, back tuck, stitch just to the right of the crease, and back tuck at the other end of the pouch. Fold the binding over so that it just covers the stitching, and then clip the center. Fold over the end of the binding right at the corner, then pull down on the end until it's about quarter of an inch down from that bottom fold. Fold along here and push the end into the binding. Keep holding on to that corner and gently push the end in. Adjust it until you see a nice neat triangle and then clip it in place. Repeat on the other side. Edge stitch close to the fold, back tacking at each end. Now the stitching didn't come out perfect, but it won't be seen from the inside of the pouch. For the second method, open up the binding completely, fold in half and pinch the center. Again, match the edges and the center and stitch across back tacking at each end. Then trim all the threads. Fold up the binding and just crease the sides a bit more. Following this 45 degree angle, trim the ends of the binding from the corners up. Fold up the bottom corner tightly so that it's in line with the edge of the pouch. Give it a little pinch and then fold down this edge so it just covers the stitching. Give it a little press, clip in place and repeat on the other side. Fold the top along the original crease, fold again so that the edge just covers the stitching and clip in place. Adjust each side so everything's nice and tight and none of the raw edges are poking out. Stitch close to the edge, back tacking at the start and finish. This is with the sides folded around and this is with the top folded down. Again, once it's turned in, all you'll see is beautifully covered corners. This is what the small and medium pouch can easily hold. Make sure to check out some of my other videos. Thanks again for watching and I hope you give this a try.